What's up everybody here on YouTube, NinjaNick333 back. We're doing, this is round five, or actually round four, it looks like again, of the uh, Pokemon Arlington Regionals stream. Uh, usually around the lunch break, they stream usually round three twice, but it looks like they're doing round four twice. Uh, they pick two different matches just so that they can fill the time in the lunch break. I don't know why they don't start at round one, uh, but... I, I assume it's something to do with, like, labor laws with their commentators or something. Um, but anyway, or maybe just sheer laziness, who knows? Because other games do round one through finals. But uh, here we have Dan. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce his last name because I don't want to sound like an idiot. Uh, versus Isaac Mil uh, Milaski. Uh, I have played Isaac before in Baltimore round two. I misplayed myself out of a tie, and he ended up winning, and he ended up getting second at that tournament. Um, funnily enough, uh, I already did watch these first two rounds before I started recording anything, um, so I, I I am a little bit informed on what his deck list choice is. He is actually playing uh, Arceus with uh, Flying Pikachu, which is what I played against him in Baltimore. He was playing Mew, and I was playing a heavy dark Pokemon line. So, uh, that was my way out of the Mew matchup, because at that point, we were still afraid of, uh, the Mew matchup. That was when Palkia was, like, at its prime as well, so the Flying Pikachu was just a great, uh, way to counter Palkia. So I feel like, uh, going into this tournament, uh, Flying Pikachu is not that bad of an idea. Um, it can hit Lugia for weakness, uh, and it, uh, it can hit Palkia for weakness as well. And Palkia is having a bit of a resurgence. It's there's a couple different versions of it right now that seem to be floating around. There's a Vika Volt version uh, that I believe won a regional in uh, Europe, and then there is also a uh, a version that plays like Articuno for paralysis with like I think Emergency Jelly or something. I, crazy stuff's going on right now in the format because people just want to innovate to counter Lugia. But anyway, as you can see, Isaac's also playing the uh, Espeon VMAX line here as well uh, in order to pr uh, protect himself from things like the Evitol, Amazing Rare from the Lost Box type stuff with the Sableye. Um, prizes for him, I mean, prizing the Luminion is a little scary. And Choice Belt, sometimes in Arceus you don't have uh, enough space in the deck because you're throwing so many different Pokemon lines in it sometimes to be able to fit like three choice belt so sometimes they only play one sometimes they only play two he's probably playing two um so to see one in his prize cards right there is not as ideal plus having a a basic energy in there as well is not ideal as well you want to make sure you have as much energy in your deck kind of at all times so that you can draw into it uh and then here uh Dan you see uh, it looks like in uh, Lugia deck, uh, he's got the Archeops, he's got a Capture Energy Prize, two, <laughs> four supporters as well. He's got two Research, Marnie, and Serena. So, uh, his consistent, pretty much all his consistency options are in here right now, it looks like. So, I do not expect this game to be going well for him. And as you can see here, Isaac is looking at his watch. Um, that is a, a very important skill to have, is wearing a watch and looking at the time when your match starts to make sure you know exactly how much time you have left in the round, uh, every round. Uh, there are, uh, pretty much every regional I've been to this season and last season, round one, more than half the room goes to time. Um, you should only be going to time when, like, the matches are close. Uh, everybody needs to learn when to scoop. Uh, you'll even hear the Pokemon commentators comment on that a lot. It's like, why didn't you just scoop here? Uh, looks like Isaac won the coin flip, so he's going first with an Ultra Ball. He's got a couple of basic energies in his hand. Uh, Dan is reading Arce Ar Arceus. That is not a good sign. Uh, he, uh, I think he's a new player. So, maybe he doesn't know what Arceus does. Um... That is very concerning. Uh, but you see Isaac, he discards a couple of cards there. I missed what they were, unfortunately. But it looks like he's just trying to get that flying Pikachu down, make sure he can evolve that potentially next turn. Uh, 
pretty much all he really needs is if he gets that flying Pikachu down and an energy attachment, that's all that's needed for an Arceus uh, turn one. And then turn two, you want to get your V-Star and use your Star Birth if you still need stuff. So uh, right now he is, uh, he is in a pretty decent spot uh, as long as he gets that energy attachment down. But as we saw in his hand, he's already got a Psychic and a Lightning. I would assume the Psychic goes down on the Arceus to conserve the Lightning for Flying Pikachu if that's necessary. Because the Flying Pikachu VMAX needs one Lightning and two Colorless. It does 160 and then Basics can't hit into it the next turn. Or at least uh, the damage is essentially negated. The effects of attacks still work, like uh, um, like Evatol's attack, I believe, still works, and uh, like something like Reg Ice that can um, that can prevent uh, Flying Pikachu from attacking. That will still work. So there are ways around the Flying Pikachu, but it is pretty annoying. Uh, looks like Dan's gonna read this card as well. Uh, the Flying Pikachu is not the main attacker, Dan. It evolves. Um, Looks like a Capture Energy is coming down on the Oranguru. Again, starting the Oranguru isn't necessarily that bad. Since Isaac went first, um, the Arceus is most likely just going to have to hit into the Oranguru to take a single prize. And it's much preferred to take a single prize as opposed to like hitting into a Lugia and taking a knockout. So in case uh, Isaac plays any uh, other damage boosting stuff like if he has multiple choice belts and if he has zigzagoon but i see i believe we saw that he did have the zigzagoon and it was prized so it's not likely that he'll be able to hit 220 with an arceus v star um on his next turn anyway um but even just hitting into a lugia and just like two shutting it with an arceus as long as you get the first attack and they can't one shot you back i mean that's not bad we did see that dan did prize a powerful colorless so um maybe if he gets unlucky here um, but he does capture energy into the Lugia. Uh, he also quick balls away a Stoutland uh, that he does not need. Uh, that does not work very well in this matchup, as I said. It only really works uh, against one prizers, as I was speaking in the previous match. Um, so it looks like he's eyeing up what he wants to do. He's going to get a Luminion down to get a supporter card. Probably Researcher Marnie. Um, Isaac doesn't have that many cards in hand, so I would probably go for a Research. Although, I don't know, he's got the uh, he's got the V-Star in his hand already. So I don't know if you'd want to go with the Research rate. Oh, he looks like he's eyeing up Serena as well. I almost forgot Serena was an option. But no, he's going for the Research. Okay, so he'll be down an additional... Yeah, he'll be down a V-Star, making it less consistent to get it on the next turn. But, I mean, his hand is pretty dead. Oh, and then he just passes. Yeah, so I would not have benched the Luminion there. I mean, I don't know. I don't remember if he quickballed for that or for the Lugia. But I would have just held that in hand for the next turn. Uh, this isn't like a format where ability lock is super prevalent. And plus, he's not playing against a deck that really ability locks anyway. So... Putting down that Luminion could have waited until the next turn. Like, say you uh, top deck like a Serena or a, a boss or, or a professor's research, then you don't necessarily need to search it out with the Luminion and you can save yourself having a two prize dead card on your bench. Uh, Isaac gets down the Radiant Gardevoir that uh, reduces the damage all your Pokemon take by 20 if they're attacked by Pokemon V. Uh, so that is pretty relevant for the math. That requires Lugia to get an additional powerful colorless energy. So uh, Lugia, unless uh, Dan's playing choice belts in there, uh, will not be able to one-shot Arceus because we did see that there was one powerful colorless energy prized. Looks like... So Isaac's searching through his deck. I believe he Ultra Balled or something. I missed that. And Dan's reading that card as well. Yeah, Isaac's considering his next move here. Or he, uh, he starbirthed for the flying Pikachu and I think the... 
maybe the double turbo i don't know if he already had that but anyway uh the key thing to do right now is to make sure you get that flying pikachu into play so that the pikachu is uh, more protected by having the more hp that thing can one shot the lugias uh which is absolutely fantastic that's what you want in this matchup is to just be able to charge them up and then just keep attacking with flying pikachu Looks like maybe that's a quick ball for di discarding the Pikachu. Um, I think here maybe you just want the Espeon uh, in play. Yeah, gets the Espeon in play just in case the Evotol comes down. Uh, protect you from that option. Make sure those effects of attacks don't affect your Pokemon so you can't just get one shot by the effect of Lugia's attack. I guess Dan's deciding what side he wants his deck and discard on even though he's already been playing uh or maybe the judges it looks like the judge is telling him that he has to do that which is odd because that's normally fine to have it on your dominance i think he's left-handed so having your deck on the left side is definitely preferred normally the rules are that you uh have to have your deck and discard on the opposite size uh, opposite side of your prize cards and lost zone um but for the stream matches they you know they do something different because you know you got to do what's good for the camera um and looks like isaac just takes the knockout on that oranguru puts three lightning energy down on that flying pikachu i think he's oh and he takes uh, a lightning energy off his prizes as well um, so Isaac is completely set up right now, and I honestly don't think that Dan has a way to come back already. Like, Isaac's start was way too good. Like, uh, Arceus decks, uh, they are very clunky, so you don't get to a position like this, uh, like turn two very often, where you've got multiple potential Pokemon set up on the bench, and you, you got your two attackers powered up. Uh, usually, when I'm playing Arceus, I always, uh, miss an energy attachment and things like that i remember when i played against isaac uh i had a uh isaac was playing Mew, and i was playing a 2-1 crobat v max line in my Ar uh, arceus pikachu as well as a hoopa v to just hard counter the uh to hard counter the Mew decks so i would try to get a crobat and a hoopa down in one turn and then uh charge both of them up at the same time with like a raihan in hand but it ended up not really working for him oh yeah and the stream is a bit glitchy at this point i did watch this match already so i don't know why they keep uh switching on and off and it, it does have a little bit of slowdown so i do apologize for that uh it looks like dan is going in with the i think evo incense for archaeops now he's discarding it with the quick ball um i maybe get yeah get charizard here uh, the only problem is you're going to have to hold on to that Charizard because you want to be able to summoning star out both Archeops. But you still do want the Charizard option. So I guess, so yeah, just get that in hand. Uh, no reason not to, especially since he doesn't have any draw supporters right now. And losing that Oranguru is pretty unfortunate for him too because that's one less card deep he can see every turn. So I think he's just uh, considering... Does he have two Archeops in the discard already? If he doesn't, um, he's going to have to summoning star out one and just swing in. But if he does, yeah, he's going to summoning star out Archeops. I don't see another Archeops in his discard pile. Uh, reading his own card to make sure he can get Oranguru with it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a fan when Pokemon puts uh, what is clearly a new player on stream. It's pretty unfortunate for Dan, because um, it seems like he's newer. Like, obviously, he's playing phenomenally for being 3-0 if he's newer, but just like, I don't know. I don't know if people have a choice to be on stream or not, but if I were him, I would not want to be on stream. Um, but yeah, so the fact that he couldn't get double Archeops out, and uh, there's no way he can one-shot this Arceus... Um, I, honestly, if I were Dan at this point, I would just be scooping because you know the next turn this uh, flying Pikachu is going to come up and knock out your Lugia V-Star in one hit. Oh, the other thing that he could have grabbed was Dunsparce if he didn't prize that. Um, 
I don't, yeah, I don't think I saw Dunsparce in his prizes, so he must not be playing it. So if he's not playing Dunsparce, then this is a very one-sided matchup in Isaac's favor. Um, but it looks like he's still just deciding to play it out. He's going to get a couple of energies down there onto his Lugia V-Star. Um, you got one powerful colorless, you got one double turbo, and it looks like a capture. So the powerful and the double turbo cancel each other out. So that's just still 220. Uh, and then of course the Radiant Gardevoir is in play from Isaac. So that is 200 exactly. Um, so 80 short. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the Lugia deck doesn't have any sort of like bench sniping options unless you're playing Raikou. So I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, if Dan is playing the Raikou in this, the Amazing Rare Raikou, it does 120 and then 120 to a bench Pokemon. So if you were to do that, you could like choice band it and then hit a flying Pikachu for 300 and then knock out the bench Arceus. Um, but even then, that's not quite ideal because you're still going to be 10 short even with the choice belt on the flying Pikachu. So I'm not sure how you could get that extra 10 damage into play. You like that my water bottle is green to match my green screen. <sighs> All right. So Isaac uh, looks like he Ultra Balls for another Flying Pikachu to get that into play. And so at this point, if you've got like a Gusting Effect, like if I were him, there's two options. If he has a Gusting Effect in hand, he could use the, uh, he could knock out the Luminion with the, Arceus and then charge up the other Pikachu um, or he can just hard retreat which it looks like is what he did uh, hard retreat into the flying Pikachu V Max just take the easy two prizes on the dude that has a whole bunch of energy so flying Pikachu here uh, does prevent all damage from basic Pokemon so He's not going to be able to do any damage with Luminion. I mean, the ideal situation for Dan here would be to just attack with the Luminion and shuffle it back into his deck and then put up, like, I don't know, a Rangaroo, I guess? I don't know. Yeah, I don't see any way out for Dan right now because the only option that would keep him favorable or at least even in the prize trade is to take the knockout on this flying Pikachu V Max right now. And, uh,. The only way to do that is by attacking with Evotol, and you can't power up Evotol unless you have two Archeops in play, and he only has one. Man, I'm not used to talking this much. <laughs> my throat's getting dry. I'm gonna have to refill my water after this round. So you see here, he's gonna go for the Luminian attack. I guess maybe he just wants to conserve the Luminian, putting it back into his deck. Uh, he's not gonna be doing any damage though. And then the next turn, Isaac is just gonna be knocking out literally anything that Dan has in play going down to two prizes. So when you're at a point where you know that you're going to be uh, six to two in prize cards with no way to knock out any of Isaac's three built up threats on board, he has, if he has a double turbo in hand, he has the potential to attack with any of three different Pokemon that he has in play. So this game is already in checkmate scenario. So I will say that a lot. So he's going in for the Luminian attack. Isaac's reminding him that he doesn't do damage. And the Oranguru goes up. So just buying himself another turn. See, the, the problem here is that once you use the Summoning Star, there is no way in the Lugia deck to get out a second Archeops. And you see here comes down the Luminion. He's going to grab a Boss's Orders or a Serena and just bring up that Lugia. And, I mean, what is Dad going to do at this point? I mean, it is just... The, the only option Dad has to win at this point is to take six prizes in one turn. And there it is. There's a double turbo and a choice belt for good measure on that Pikachu. Um, and Dan sees the writing on the walls finally and decides to scoop it up. So that is game one down to Isaac. He has been playing phenomenally this season. And let's see if we can get right into game two. We see the prize cards here. We got double Evo Incense, 
double Ultra Ball, double Energy cards, one of them being Capture, one of them being Powerful. Over on Isaac's side, he's got uh, Stormy Mountains, which is an interesting inclusion in this deck. I would opt for Path to the Peak myself, but I guess that that does shut off the um, the Espeon VMAX. So, um, I guess Stormy Mountains just being a consistency option, I kind of like that um, from Isaac. Then we got one double turbo, which is going to make it harder for him to Trinity Charge or Trinity Nova. One flying Pikachu, he's probably playing three, it's fine. Aluminium, that might come up, double balls. So, I mean, honestly, prizes from Isaac aren't terrible. They could be better, but they're not terrible. The prizes from Dan are just absolutely horrendous. Um, having two Evo Incenses in his prizes means that it's highly unlikely he's going to be able to get two Archeops in the discard pile yet again. And he already had one of those games, game one. So, I mean, this is uh, looking pretty ugly. Isaacs are also started the Flying Pikachu. And uh, the reason the Flying Pikachu is my favorite variant of Arceus decks uh, is that the Flying Pikachu is free retreat on both the basic and the VMAX. So, as you can see there, he has a um, Arceus, v star, Ar Arceus V in hand. So he could have started Arceus, he could have started Flying Pikachu, either doesn't matter. So even if you're like you're not sure what you're going up against, or you don't have a Arceus in hand, you can at least get that Flying Pikachu down there and be able to search out an Arceus in order to just hard retreat into it and Trinity Charge going second. So going second in his deck is actually not the worst. And as you can see, he already has the double turbo even. Uh, this is just dirty. Um, so you are going to see a Trinity Charge uh, on his first turn. He's already got a Flying Pikachu in his hand already as well. Yeah, so this is pretty disgusting. Uh, he's going in for the Trinity Charge. He's going to load up three energies on that Flying Pikachu. Uh, going for a good mix there. I like that he's not going full investment with the Lightning. That leaves more Lightning to potentially go on a second Flying Pikachu. Uh, the Espeon isn't super relevant in this matchup, even though it does stop the Evitol. Um, I feel that the Flying Pikachu has just put so much pressure on those Lugias that it's fine. Uh, looks like he's considering a second Capture Energy going down on this Lugia. Um, and he has a Marnie as well. Looks like he's going to put that on top of his deck with the Oranguru. Oof. Uh, what else does he have in hand? Is that... Looks like... Like, three energy Charizard and Archeops? Alright, now he's gonna... I guess use the Luminion to get that Marnie? Or... Or no. He's going for the research. He'd rather just discard all of those energies and just get going, I guess? I do remember this from when I watched it the first time. These first two matches are the only ones I watched ahead of time, as I've said already. Um, but this is... I, I'm not sure what he was doing here. So he searches for the research, but he plays Marnie. So, again, that's two games in a row where he needlessly put a Luminian V on his bench. So I'm, I'm not sure, like, what the strategy is in that. Like, maybe if he was playing against, like, a fire deck or something, then it would be fine, because you're at least hitting for weakness, but... I don't know, man. So we see Quick Ball for the Archeops here. Um, or Quick Ball getting rid of the Archeops here. Um, he's going to get that Evitol. Um, again, that is something good to have. But he he needs two bench spots um, for two Archeops. And he only has one in his discard pile so far. Puts down the Lugia V. And now he only has room for that one Archeops and only has that one Archeops. So is this going to be a second game in a row where he only has one Archeops in play? Because that, again, limits all of his options for... Yeah, and then he uh, discards Marnie with Read the Wind, Lugia's first attack. Discard one, draw three. You ideally want to use Read the Wind to discard... Uh, to discard Archeops, but uh, since it was a quick ball he was using, he didn't have the option to search that out. So, um, I'm not sure if I would have discarded the Marnie there. I'll maybe save that for the next turn, but um, 
either way. It looks like he has another Marnie in his hand anyway, so it doesn't matter. But uh, he's got way too many Pokemon in play. Um, that, again, that Luminia is just really coming back to bite him. Um, but to stop dwelling on that, looks like uh, Isaac puts down the Stormy Mountains to get a Flying Pikachu. Quick Balls for an Espeon. Puts down Arceus V-Star and Starbirths. And, uh, yeah. Uh, game, I mean, this is, this is check. It's almost checkmate at this point. I mean, I would consider it checkmate, because I don't know if he's going to be able to... I mean, next turn, Dan needs to summoning star two Archaeops into play and attack with Evatol, most likely. And the Evatol's in his hand. <laughs> and he has that Luminian down on his bench. So again, if he didn't bench that Luminian, he could have benched the... Uh, the Evatol, and then had the option to get double Archaeops into play this next turn. Um, Isaac is probably, it looks like he Starbirthed for uh, Flying Pikachu and something else. Um, yeah, it's most likely he's just going to evolve into Flying Pikachu and just hard retreat. Uh, looks like the other card he got was Research, so that's awesome. Uh, the other thing that he does want here is another Energy Attachment. Uh, if he could just, uh, like, Hard attach a lightning energy to his benched flying Pikachu, uh, the basic one, uh, then he's like all set up to go because he's just going to be able to obliterate these Lugias coming in. Okay, so it looks like Isaac is retreating his Arcea uh, Arceus, God, Archaeops, Arceus, getting myself confused here. Um, hard retreating it by discarding the double turbo. He's thinking about what he wants to go into. I think it's pretty blatantly obvious you just go into the Flying Pikachu VMAX. Um, and just hit for 320 damage. Uh, the fact that Dan is not playing uh, Dunsparce in his deck is really just... You know, kind of, <laughs> kind of making this pretty one-sided. Um, it's pretty unfortunate that a matchup can just be this one-sided. Uh, but that's the weakness mechanic in Pokemon. I preferred it back when it was like plus thirty or plus twenty or whatever it was. I never even played under those conditions. I've only been playing since the black and white era around uh, the Plasma sets release. So, um, I mean, it's been a while we've been playing with these types of. Uh, weaknesses but it does make it so hard when you're going against a matchup that you're weak to and you just have no outs you super rely on a card like dunsparce uh even isaac himself because he's playing uh, arceus v star uh even he would likely be playing dunsparce in his deck just to counter something like reggie's even though the flying pikachu is so good against reggie's with them all being basic Pokemon and being able to be one-shot by Flying Pikachu's attack even with the double turbo energy's 20 reduction. Like, you usually want to at least use one Arceus, and uh, having that just get blown up by a Regirock feels pretty bad. So we see the promotion of the Luminian yet again. Uh, Dan is going to read the Flying Pikachu yet again to make sure that he can't damage it with Luminian. Uh, if you played something like Escape Rope and then Boss or whatever, uh, put it back to the bench, it will reset that effect. Um, but I don't think that Dan's likely playing any Escape Ropes. That's a very uncommon inclusion in Lugia. I would say that not a single deck uh, has ever run an Escape Rope in it for Lugia. Uh, so he is going to Evo Incense for an Archaeops. Looks like he might be able to get uh, the double Archaeops into play this turn. So see, this would be good, in my opinion, if he wasn't against Flying Pikachu. I think the thing uh, this is coming down to is Dan's inexperience in this matchup. You saw him have to read the Arceus and the Flying Pikachu and the Flying Pikachu VMAX and the Radiant Gardevoir. I don't think he just knows what the deck is capable of. So he's going for his, his normal plays that he would go against with any other deck. So right here, if, uh, I mean, if he was able to damage his opponent's Pokemon, putting Luminian in as an attacker is actually pretty good. You just do, like, 120 damage, you shuffle it back into the deck so that you can reuse it for another supporter later. 
Um, you'll get the summoning star off for two Arceus, and then uh, for two Archeops. See, I'm doing it again. And then you would have yet another free bench space to be able to put something else into play. Uh, you could just put up, say, a Rangaroo that you don't mind getting knocked out. It uh, forces an odd prize trade and softens up this Pikachu VMAX in order to be knocked out. But just because of its Pikachu VMAX and it can't be damaged by basic Pokemon, Dan is just quite literally scratching his head there, not knowing what to do because his only option to attack the flying Pikachu is Lugia, and Lugia gets one shot by the Flying Pikachu. It, it two shots Flying Pikachu, it gets one shot. It's just such a awful, awful matchup here. Uh, looks like he's using Field Blower, or oh my god, Field Blower. You're gonna look at me showing my age. Uh, lost to Vacuum. <laughs> Sending uh, Stoutland V to the Lost Zone, as well as that Stormy Mountains. I don't think that's really relevant at this point. There is, uh, uh, there's uh, a full bench on Isaac's side, and he already has his two uh, Pikachus built up. Um, he is going for the charge up. Um, I mean, I think what he's going to have to do here is like retreat and attack in with Lugia and let Isaac take the two prizes just so that that one is damaged. Yeah, I think the best case scenario for Dan right now would be to... Attack with Lugia V-Star and Marnie in the same turn. Uh, that way, Isaac's options are limited going into the next turn. Maybe he whiffs an energy attachment. I mean, he'll still be able to attack with the Flying Pikachu and take a couple prizes, but... Yeah, Dan needs to hard attach to the Luminian. Uh, use both charges on the Lugia. Retreat into the Lugia. Marnie. <laughs> uh, attack with the Lugia. Let it get knocked out, and then on the next turn, uh, put up, like, uh, then, I don't know, then put up, uh, Archeops, and then finish off the Flying Pikachu while using Marnie again, and then just hoping over the course of those two turns, Isaac didn't draw a single energy card. Yeah, I think that's Dan's only out like breaking this down as far as possible um but he does get the v guard energy on uh v guard does apply after weakness uh so he's going to be taking 290 only from this flying pikachu so um it's pretty unfortunate there even if he was able to get two v guard energies on if he did play two the effect only applies once and even if it did apply twice, uh, we already know that Isaac's playing Choice Belt in his deck. So he just needs to slap down a Choice Belt. So, again, uh, writing's on the wall. Uh, Dan is going to be, again, six prizes to two, just like in the previous matchup. But here he goes. He's doing that play that I said. He's going to have to attack with the Lugia V-Star. Uh, he's doing probably two, at least 220, so he's doing, what's that, one powerful, two powerful colorless energies, I think. I think there might be a double turbo on there. I can't really tell. How much is he doing? 220? 220. Yeah, I don't think he has double turbo on there. And, of course, Isaac gets an energy attachment and a flying Pikachu VMAX. Yeah, so at this point, that is checkmate, because even if Dan can get this... Uh, yeah, even if Dan can get this flying Pikachu to go down, the other one is just already there, and Dan cannot one-shot it for anything, basically. Yeah, if the V-Guard applied before weakness, it would be a lot better, because uh, that would be saving him from knockout. I'm not sure if he didn't realize that or if he's just hoping that Isaac didn't know. Looks like a Serena from Isaac's coming down. If Isaac just has boss in his hand, which he does, uh, game's over. Uh, because not only does he knock out with a flying Pikachu this turn, what he's going to do is he's going to retreat this flying Pikachu into the other one. Or no, actually, no. If he has Choice Belt, he can attack with the benched one. But since he doesn't have Choice Belt, he has to attack with the active one. Because because of that V-Guard energy, the benched one 
isn't going to be doing enough with the powerful uh with the double turbo energy so he has to attack with the active one which is going to let dan get some prizes but since the boss's orders is in hand he can just bring up that luminian which just so happens to also be lightning weak to you know rub salt in the wound um yeah so i think both of these games came down to the fact that Basically, just Dan isn't playing Dunsparce, and he just keeps putting Luminian down to relatively little value. But, I mean, otherwise, even if he did uh, keep the Luminian out of play, um, unless he really needed to, and if he had Dunsparce, I mean, I think Isaac is still favored. Uh, just because of the fact that um, it's going to block... Uh, the Charizard from attacking, and the Espeon VMAX is going to block the Evatol from doing its thing. So Isaac's deck, just on paper, uh, has a better matchup. But even just having that Dunsparce just throws uh, the matchup on its head, because the Lugia can survive two attacks, so you're trading two prizes for three prizes. Uh, Dan puts down the Evatol on his bench, uh, charges up an Archeops and attacks and takes a knockout with that. Goes down to three prize cards. Um, so now it comes down to the fact that Isaac has the boss in hand uh, in order to win this turn. Uh, if he didn't, um, I mean, Dan would have to take a three prize knockout on the next turn. So, um, and they're going for either the handshake or the fist bump. The COVID rules say you have to fist bump now. Um, not sure why the COVID rules are still in effect. Uh, COVID is bumping up again, but I think everybody doesn't care if they live or if they die at this point. So, um, but yeah, that was the, uh, that was the match. Um, it went pretty cookie cutter. As you can see, uh, Isaac wins with his flying Pikachu just because weakness is good. Uh, he also did get two pretty stellar starts too. Arceus decks don't generally do that well with setup i would say at least in my experience so um but anyways guys uh make sure that you are uh subscribing if you want to see more videos like this i am doing this for every match from the arlington texas uh, pokemon regionals uh we are also um uh, we also go live on twitch every once in a while so make sure you follow the ninja nick 333 on twitch I uh, got all those other socials too, uh, Discord, um, links might be in my description, I don't know, some stuff broke, uh, I don't, not all my links are working, so, but thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in the next one.